It threatens the lives of more young women than cancer. It affects one in three women worldwide. It leaves women mentally scarred for life. It is violence against women and girls. According to the UN, this brutality is on the rise. Our series comes from the front line of the hidden war on women and girls. The field of conflict is just as likely to be the home as the brothel. This time on Women on the Front Line, we are in Nepal to follow the story of Sushma, a courageous young woman who, after escaping from an Indian brothel, sets out to bring her trafficker to justice. Deserted by her husband and with four children to support, 24-year-old Sushma from a remote village in Nepal was sold for sexual slavery. <laughs> Her trafficker took her to Kolkata, but she managed to escape. Shushma could have suffered the same fate as this Nepali woman, sold as a girl and now in her 60s, still a prostitute. In this film, we document how difficult it is for Nepal to staunch the flow of young women being trafficked across an open two and a half thousand kilometer long border with India. And we meet some of the women on the front line trying to put a stop to the trade. <laughs> And we follow Shushma as she sets out to find the man who lured her to a brothel in Kolkata. Landlocked between China and India, the Asian economic boom has bypassed the Himalayan kingdom of Nepal. Corrupt government and more than a decade of civil conflict are among the reasons why Nepal is the 12th poorest country in the world. Seven out of ten Nepalis live on less than two dollars a day, and according to the World Bank, almost a third of the population doesn't have enough to eat. Since 1981, Nepal's population has almost doubled to nearly 30 million, making it one of the fastest growing countries in Asia and increasing competition for land. Nepal is now an aid and remittance dependent economy. Every year, according to the UN, about 100,000 Nepalis leave the country for employment. About a third are women and girls half of whom are trafficked unwittingly across the open border to the brothels of big Indian cities. But the statistics are not much more than guesswork. The trade in women and girls for sex is covert and highly organized. This particular problem, which is regarded as one of the highest crime in our country, is gradually expanding. The trade, the, the, the traffickers, um, uh, are, you know, very much clever to hide themselves from the eyes of the law. Uh, but uh, the government is trying its best to control, to combat the trafficking issue. Conservative estimates put it at about 7,000 girls a year, but we feel that it's much higher. Sex trafficking, it's a clandestine activity. It's very hard to get data on it. And it is something that urgently needs to be addressed. While there are anti-trafficking laws in place in Nepal, an undermanned police force can do little more than make random checks on people passing through the official border posts. The hard-pressed authorities welcome the assistance of non-governmental organizations or NGOs in identifying possible traffickers. These women, some of whom have been victims of trafficking themselves, are working for the NGO Mighty Nepal, which mounts its own vigilante patrols to help the border police. We 
बिहान बिहान पांच बजे देखि यहाँ आँर अब मं आए अब इंदा सोधपूछ कर एड्रेस भाला पठाई दी हमें छेन उदेल ढाटी राख ढाट हमें यहाँ देखि वहाँ चौकी में लाइज चौकी में लगे अब सोधपूछ कर सोधपूछ कर दे हेव सम सर्ट अफ ड्रीम इन दर माइंड फर बेटर लाइफ फर बेटर क्वालिटी लाइफ लाइक दैट the traffickers and they easily can you know tap uh, those uh, aspiring for better uh, life girls are caught they are easily tempted by their you know false promises वहाँ गए पे अब तस्त धंदा कर दिन भादा नहीं तैं घर मालिक ने पिटेरे ये कर कति यातना देखे भर बाध्यता भर नहीं वहाँ कर छोरी क्या जान लग्न भाग लानी मं ये राम हिसाब लाने भर आप डकुमेंट देखा सब प्रमाण पुरा लाइ त पासपोर्ट लाइन फैमिलीज इवन पेरेंट्स दे एग्री टू सेंड देयर डॉटर्स दे डोट हेव इन इनफ इन्फर्मेशन दैट्स वाई दे थिंक दैट ओके देयर डॉटर्स आर गोइंग टू इंडिया और और सम अदर प्लेस टू अर्न मनी बिकज दे आर पुअर Unconvinced this girl has a genuine job to go to. They finally persuade her father that it's likely they are victims of trafficking and stop them crossing the border. No pare ko manche, sojo manche, esari arka ko pura ma lai lai ma lagera aapna chori lai, padhao ne kaam no garnus. Jiban khira jaan se chori ko. Hai. It's 5 a.m. at Mighty Nepal's women's shelter in Kathmandu. This is Shushma, the 24-year-old mother of four who escaped from a Kolkata brothel. She was taken to the local police, who alerted the Nepali consulate. Mighty Nepal have brought her back to Kathmandu, and in an act of great courage, she has agreed to help them and the police find her trafficker. As dawn breaks. Shushma leads Mighty Nepal staff accompanied by plain clothes police officers to the house where she met her trafficker barely a week before. The couple who introduced them will have no idea she is back in Nepal. The police are hoping to catch them unawares. <laughs> the police find three suspects in the house and arrest them. This is the man Shushma says sold her to a brothel in Kolkata. He admits to accompanying her to India. The police formally charge the suspects at their station. From here they are taken to Mighty Nepal's headquarters. Mighty means mother's home and the organization has been giving shelter to victims of trafficking for nearly 20 years supported by international donors the suspects have been brought here to be questioned by founder of the organization anuradha kwarala and a team of lawyers <laughs> The case can't proceed if Shushma doesn't make a formal accusation. Separated from the suspects in the next room, Shushma tells lawyers her side of the story. If you file case against trafficker, they in threaten these girls so we have to counsel them and we have to encourage them 
to fight uh, file case against these people because until and unless you put people behind the bar you are not going to prevent trafficking anywhere <laughs> And that's it. Casually and apparently without forethought, he admits to receiving money. This is the man who admits he was directly involved in her sale to a brothel. Shushma says he told her he was helping her to find a better job. Kolkata, one of the most densely populated cities in the world, where over 30% live in slums. Here in the red light district, there is an insatiable demand for Nepali women, considered exotic by Indian men. Shushma was lucky to have escaped. Kamal was not so lucky. She was trafficked from Nepal as a girl. Now in her 60s and still a prostitute, she is not afraid to speak out. <laughs> नेपाल <laughs> Back in Kathmandu, the man who sold Shushma has been charged with trafficking. He will spend two years awaiting trial on a charge that now excludes the possibility of bail. And under new legislation in Nepal brought in by the 2007 Anti-Trafficking Act, traffickers now face much tougher sentences. Uh, recently, uh, the government has published uh, one act which is very strong against these traffickers. Uh, so, uh, if the traffickers is convicted, he will be imprisoned for 20 years. There is a big vicious circle and I think about 20-25 uh, people are involved in one trafficking, one girl to be trafficked. She knows only this man who lured her. So this is the man who gets the least money is being put into the jail. It's not the planner or the money lender who is in the jail. So that is why we tried with two women when they came to Nepal. They have big houses here, big businesses here. We tried to arrest them, you know. One we did arrest, but then political protections that she was let out and she went back to India. She was trafficking women and she was running a brothel in India. <laughs> Legal reform, such as the recent Trafficking Act, has been brought about by the efforts of campaigners such as Dr. Renu Rajbandari to improve the status of women in Nepali society. For the past 15 years, she has been helping rehabilitate victims of trafficking. 
Discrimination is real fundamental cause for trafficking in this country. Because here women are being kind of taken as a second class citizen by the state. Uh, who doesn't have uh, equal right as men have in this country and in the f within family also women are being treated as an asset okay she's my daughter so then I decide what is good for her you know she is my wife so I decide what is good for her Shushma who hasn't seen her children for over a month is finally on her way home after having made her statement to the court Abandoned by her husband who left her for another woman, Shushma couldn't make enough money in her village to support her four children. 80% of Nepalese live in villages. Most land is owned by a few influential high caste families, with the poor trying to eke out a living as tenant farmers. Most rural Nepali households now depend on at least one member's earnings from employment in the city or abroad. During the last five years, Nepali migrant workers have sent home as much as 1.5 billion US dollars. This totals 15% of Nepal's GDP. <laughs> Girls who had been trafficked, um, her family usually accepts. But society continues stigmatizing, you know. This girl had, be, had been in Mumbai or, or somewhere. So she's a bad woman. You know, she has been already exploited woman. So those kind of uh, stigmatization comes there. After a 12-hour journey, Shushma finally reaches her village. She meets her mother and her youngest child on the road to their house. <laughs> ขันดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาดาด
The main problem of trafficking is gender equality. The challenge is in moving from legislation to practice, in having an effect in the lives of people on the ground, so that women know that a life as a second class citizen is not the way it's supposed to be and that they have opportunities to change that. We have realized that changing value system is not uh, that easy thing. Those values that are already that we have uh, were the result of the hundreds of years. And so uh, within a few years or maybe one decade or two decades is not that long uh, to uh, change the mindset of the people, uh, to change the value system. And we are optimistic, actually. Six months on, Shushma remains in the village with her children. Her traffickers are still in jail, awaiting trial.